Hello, um, apologies for the scarf. It's turned cold again. Bloody hell. Bloody freezing um, here in North London. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm doing a tag. I haven't actually been tagged. It's just, it was a tag by um, Bedtime143, aka Rob. And I, I really enjoyed his video. It's a really, really well conceived, engaging tag. Um, uh, tags are often are often just um, just a dry list dry list of questions, which in turn you a dry list of facts. And what he's done is that he's created he's written four four questions, and they're, in essence they're quite standard questions. But uh, he, he's created scenarios around them to make them, like I say to make them more engaging. More inspiring, more more interesting for the per the person doing them, and also the viewer. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, so you did have to tag me. Tagged a few, tagged three people, but um, I, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, and it was an interesting tag. And um, I do enjoy doing tags. I've not done one in a while, but um, so I thought, why the hell not? And I think I did tell him that he's that I'm going to do it. So here it is. It's actually quite difficult. Um, because it, it pretty much involves sort of one choice of sort of a whole variety of categories, you know, favourites, um, which is which has been difficult, and I've sort of uh, copped out to learn, and I've have sort of uh, maybe sort of picked one, but then gone on to sort of have honourable mentions, which is a bit of a cop out. I've written shitloads of uh, dodgy lists, dodgy notes. Um, and there's more besides, but I'll crack on because the, you'll see you'll see what I mean by these sort of scenarios. So I've, I've written them down. The, he re, he requires for the purposes of the tag that you uh, whoever's doing them. And I will be tagging people, but I won't list them at the end. I'll just put them in the description box. He requires that you uh, read out scenario first, just for the purposes of the tag. And, and, so, and so you'll get the message. You'll get the idea. Sorry. Um, the first one is favourite song. I got a bit carried away with this. I got a bit carried away with the scenario that he sets, and I forgot that it's actually favourite song, which sort of slightly puts the different slant in it. But this is the scenario. It says, "Your house is surrounded, surrounded by flesh-eating zombies. You have three minutes left until they eat you and your dog. <laughs> Grab your iPod and listen to dot dot dot." There you go. So it's pretty much your favourite song. But uh, I got carried away. I got carried away in the scenario. And I've just thrown. No, I haven't. No. So <laughs> just got carried away. So I will have written down what I thought I had. Um, quite carried away in the scenario. I started thinking of all these things that were sort of applicable to the scenario. Um, one of them I, I was going to pick was "Summer Breeze" by the Isley Brothers, uh, which is actually uh, it is actually one of my favourite songs, and it is uh, without doubt the best summer song ever written. But um, you know, uh, without without doubt, without debate, um, nothing else compares. And if anyone anyone wants to say say otherwise, uh, I I um, I wouldn't because you'd only look foolish. <laughs> uh, it's some reason why Isley Brothers just as a bit of escapism. If I'm going to be eaten by zombies, um, what better? You know, it's it's sort of escapism before they. Uh, rip your insides out. Or if I'm up for a bit of a fight, um, Sabotage by the Beastie Boys, a nice aggressive song. There was, another, there was a few sort of uh, aggressive rock songs that I went through, but I, I think Sabotage by the Beastie Boys is, is sort of consistently, it, it, you know, it, it lasts a bit longer because they're quite short. And that was a problem with the, uh, the short rock songs, is that, you know, as long as they last, they last about three minutes generally, um, and what happens after that? Because uh, you've lost your your impetus for a uh, kicking zombie ass. So um, I suggested the Benny Hill theme tune. <laughs> I'll put a link to that one in the in the, in the description box. But those those are just the honourable mentions. The two the two I have picked. So you say I've copped out pick two. First one is a Little Wing by Jimi Hendrix, because it, it is one uh, one of my two favourite songs. Um, it's it's got the it's got the, the typical Hendrix uh, guitar in it, but it's all pared down. It's quite low key. 
it's personal. And it's, it, um, I don't know, it seems, it's, it always reminds me of um, all of my exes. They all seem to have sort of fallen into this category. So every time, every time I listen to this song about this girl he refers to as Little Wing, I have to think back and all of my exes have been like that. Been like this sort of slightly, slightly eccentric girl he's, he's, uh, that he sings about. Uh, although I may be reading into the song incorrectly, I don't know, but that's but that's my interpretation. And my other one is more contemporary. It's called um, "All My Friends" by LCD Sound System. It's sort of a electro funk with a sort of punky tinge, um, epic, epic sort of kaleidoscope of um, bleeps and squelches and um, electronic sounds and samples, just uh, layered upon layer, but all distinct, you can make them out, and it's just a, it's, a, it's an epic, but he sings over the top, and it's a story as well. And, um, and it, it sort of has this sort of uh, electronic, um, electronic uh, feel, but it's personal as well, because a lot of electronic music is not really personal, but, but it is. But it's also got a really nice, really nice bass line groove to it, so, so that's All My Friends by LCD Sound System. First one, Little Wing by Jimi Hendrix. Second one, All My Friends by LCD Sound System. Uh, I'll put links to those in the description box. Oh, already six minutes. Ooh. Um, second question, movies. You're gobbling down a foot long subway when you notice your neighbour walk out and lie down in the middle of the road to get run over. You bring him inside and you show him. I've got two here. Um, again, I've copped out, I've got two. The first one, I've got the Little Norse Prince, uh, it's a Ghibli uh, animation, really early Ghibli animation. It's, um, it's, I picked this because it's the most inspiring film that I think I've ever seen. Although it's inspiring in a, in a quite particular way. It's, it's sort of like a, a socialist work fable uh, about working for the greater good. So it's, it's sort of maybe inappropriate for someone who's, um, who's feeling suicidal, but I wanted to pick it because it's inspiring, incredibly inspiring. Uh, and there's lots of work songs and stuff, and, and everybody works for the greater good. But it, and then again, it might be sort of a bit sort of hectoring and sort of a, you know a bit, a bit of a nag for someone who's looking to top themselves. So I picked this. It's a film. It's called Swingers. It's a film that I've spoken about before. It's basically a, a loser's rites of passage. Um, the, the main character, not him. It's it's the one in the middle there. It's called Mikey. He. Um, he he finds redemption. He throughout the film he's a bit yeah he's a, he's a loser, but he finds redemption and he learns to transcend all the bullshit, and he uh, achieves enlightenment. So it's not it's not um, instantly inspiring, but it, it at the end it culminates in this. Uh, it's not a really cheesy ending, but things fall into place. Things find their own level, and like I said, he he, he achieves an, achieves enlightenment. And sort of just disregards all the bullshit and all the sort of superficial bullshit that, that that he goes through, and I think that that's that that would be quite inspiring for someone. Although you'd have to get him to sit through the whole film, you know, and so, you know uh, you'd have to <laughs> you'd have to keep um, telling them that it does end well without meaning to spoil anything for anyone. Um, games. This is the most difficult one because I was trying to think of different sorts of games. Oh, sorry. I've got to read out a question. You're stranded. Games. You're stranded on a desert island. Luckily, you come across a suitcase with three games and a console to play them on. The games are. Yeah, this is the most difficult one because um, I couldn't find lots of games that fill, um, met my needs. And actually, when I when I did come to um, come to uh, a decision, it was actually surprising me. Um, although the, these are these are um, games I've mentioned in the past, um, the thing is I, I I went through a uh, PS2, the 360, the you know um, all these different uh, systems. None of them quite had the games to to meet my needs. And in the end, I went for the Wii because you have the backwards compat compatibility. The three games are Ikaruga because that's hard as nails and it would take you it would take you a, a lifetime to perfect. Fire Emblem because it's just a giant game, giant game, and uh, I couldn't not go without an RPG, even though it's a tactical RPG. 
and Tax Loco versus Capcom, another game to, to perfect, even though it's, um, more, it's a more accessible fighter. There are less accessible fighters, which probably suit the purpose more. But um, for me, it's more accessible, which I would need, it's more of an instant fix. But then you, you can still perfect it to the, to the sort of nth degree. So I'd choose a Wii, and I'd have Ikaruga and uh, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance on the GameCube, and uh, Taxonoko vs Capcom on the Wii. So uh, I think they fill my needs, they fulfill my needs, sorry. Did I say fill my needs? Have I been saying fill my needs? I meant fulfill my needs. So final scenario, favourite quote. This this one was a this one was a no-brainer for me. You finally decide to confront your arch nemesis who has tormented you for ages. You meet them in an abandoned church. After a bloody battle, you have down you have them down gasping for breath when you say See that's a what a brilliant setup. A really conceived, really well realised setup. Well, uh, my uh, honourable mention, so I've just chucked my notes on the floor. Excuse me. Honourable mention, it's a line from uh, one of the best films ever made, one of my favourite films, and I urge anyone to go out and see it. I should have, I should have uh, brought it down with me. I do actually have it, um, called Chinatown. The film's called Chinatown. And the line is, it's the final line in the film, it says, forget it, Jake. It's Chinatown. That's just the, that's the line. It's basically um, you have to see the film to understand the context, and in the in the, the actual context, it's incredibly tragic um, and heartbreaking. But it, it's sort of a it's sort of a, the idea that um, these are these are it's like an irresistible force, and you can't really go against them. You just have to. Um, you just have to relent to this sort of irresistible force, um, which I thought was quite apt for all the drama that's been going on recently about sort of uh, internet arguments and stuff. They're not something that you can ignore. They happen. And you have to get around them as best you can. It's not something you can fight, which is slightly, slightly, um, you know, disappointing. But it's, the, the line is, forget it, Jake. Forget it, Jake. It's Chinatown. In other words, you just have to accept, accept it, whether you like it or not. But that was just my honourable mention. My, my actual pick, it's uh, from a film called Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead. Not so much, um, not so much uh, uh, an underrated film. More, uh, it doesn't get the acclaim. It, it has the critical, um, positive critical reception the critical acclaim, but um, it, it doesn't get spoken about because it's got like a quirky edge. It's sort of from that sort of Tarantino school, but it's got quirky Tarantino. I can't remember the guy, the, the director's name, but it's got a really nice, nice cast of characters and really they're all eccentric characters. Uh, but the, the line, it comes from a character called Critical Bill. And the setup is brilliant and the, the line it delivers is brilliant and it, it's sort of it's really, really unexpected, but the character's called Critical Bill, and he says, I, I don't know if it's act or not, but he says, um, I am Godzilla, you are Japan, like that, but obviously with better acting skills, not so wooden. I am Godzilla, you are Japan. You have to see the film to understand the context. So, uh, Go and see things to do in Denver. There, uh, sorry, things to do in Denver when you're dead. Wait until that line, and you'll understand the context. It's a, a really, really brilliant line. But there you go. That's me. Um, nearly 15 minutes. I'm going to tag a load of people because I would like other people to do this tag because uh, I, I, I think it's a, like I said at the beginning. It's a really well conceived, really well realised tag. More engaging than than most. So. Um, Take a look in the description box to see if you're tagged. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to tag as many people as possible. There are links to a lot of the films and music I've mentioned. Thanks for watching. I hope that wasn't too long and wordy. Uh, I'll be back. I think I've got a... Yeah, I've got a gameplay to upload. And there'll probably be some other videos. You know, other videos, book stand videos. Uh, along with them. Later. Yeah.
Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.